Scots have finished in Lithuania, they got a nil-nil. Can England go one better here? The road to Euro 2000 starts now. Our match commentators are Andy Gray and Martin Tyler. Some redesigning of the Rasunda Stadium can't obscure the memories of the last match England lost outright in the European Championships when Graham Taylor's team were put out of the finals here six years ago. Well, Sweden have four survivors from that side. Right back, Roland Nilsson, now at Coventry. Centre backs, Patrick Anderson and Joachim Bjorklund, who both had spells in British club football since then. And in midfield, Stefan Schwarz, once of Arsenal. You'll also be familiar with the goalkeeper, Magnus Hedman, now Nielsen's club colleague in the Premiership. Celtics, Henrik Larsson. And Andreas Anderson of Newcastle called in at the 11th hour because Per Zetterberg, a diabetic, woke from his pre-match sleep complaining of dizzy spells. Well, it's 4-4-2 four, four, for Sweden tonight, Martin. But it's a 4-4-2 four, four, that's got very good movement in it and will test England. Roy Hodgson says they'll push up from the back. I feel pretty sure about that. All the way up from here. They'll push up, get Nielsen coming forward, Kamak going forward like that. And then it's up. Can they cope with the pace of Anderson coming up, Lindbergh coming up, and the pace of the front two, Larson and Pedersen? Tony Adams plays, as does Gareth Southgate with Gary Neville, Southgate's Southgate stand in in the World Cup now injured himself a midfield place up for grabs with David Beckham suspended David Batty and Nicky Butt injured and Jamie Redknapp's return to fitness is well timed well it's a pretty familiar system now that we see Glenn Hoddle play Martin Scholes is a key in many respects can he get the space will he find the time not only to support Shearer and Owen but to play a little delicate balls in behind Bjorklund and Anderson for Owen to run onto with post-World Cup publications obscuring some of the excitement that there should have been about this start of a European adventure for England. It is a pleasure to be able to focus now on the football. Massive interest here in Sweden, where they follow the English game so closely. Waiting for the allotted hour is the Italian referee Pierre Luigi Collina a distinctive figure on the world football scene sunshine as it has been since England arrived here a pitch that's better than many of the England players expected although by no means perfect and not helped by a youth match taking place here an hour or so before the kickoff. And here is Roland Nielsen, international number 98 for him. Cut out by Lasso. 
goals. Nine of this England starting 11 started on that fateful night in St. Etienne nine and a half weeks ago. And Argentina abruptly cut short the World Cup adventure. Cut short there. There's a, a chance to turn with Paul Scholes. That was a great attempt. Lovely skill from Scholes. It's a great opportunity for England to really put pressure on Magnus Edmund in goal. We'll know all about Shearer. We'll know all about Redknapp's ability to strike the ball. Can he hit the target? That, to me, in the opening minute, that's the important thing. Make the goalkeeper work. Well, a chance for England's first attempt at goal in their first Euro 2000 qualifier. It comes from Shearer. My goodness, what a start. Alan Shearer, who has been somewhat upstaged by Michael Owen in the pre-match build-up to this game, is centre stage now. Well, it's not the fiercest free kick I've ever seen him hit. It's bouncing, what, six yards out? And I think the goalkeeper should get across to that. It's goalkeeper's side. It's played there. It's not brilliantly paced. It's not right in the corner. I think Hedman will be disappointed. He's only pushed out of the post. But what a start from England, and what a start from Alan Shearer. As you say, he's taken backstage for since the beginning of this season. But what an answer from the England captain within a minute at the start of this match. And another pat on the back for Paul Scholes with uh, his inventive piece of play that led to the free kick from which England have struck so early. Now Sweden had to make a late team change. One of their more influential midfield men, Zetterberg, not fit to start the game. So that was a blow, and this an even heavier one, and you can just sense the change in atmosphere. Fantastic feeling coming into the stadium, and optimism from Sweden. Maybe some optimism now with that Jungberg, whose progress is not quite as penetrating as the Swedish fans were hoping for. They were just rediscovering uh, their voices after being struck silent by Shearer. Here he is. Get down the outside of Jerkland. Well, strike again would be the answer, wouldn't it? Well, they're shaking, and there's no doubt the Swedes are. It's exactly what I said, though, Martin. The port hit the target. It wasn't a great free kick from Allen. He's he struck better and will strike better. But the one thing he did in the first minute and of an important match when the goalkeepers might be nervy is he made Headman work. Well, they're being billed really as the golden boys, Shearer and Owen up front. and I think it's a long while when you look back when England potentially have had two such a great goal-getters in tandem. We had the, the great Gary Lineker era of goal scoring, of course. Goals regularly from David Platt and Brian Robson, midfield men. And of course, Shearer, as you just saw, 21 now for his country. Will there be even more opportunities for him because of the attention that's being paid to Owen? Andreas Anderson working it wide to Leicester's Cormark. Melby. Andreas Anderson again. Cormark, who hasn't been in Leicester's Premiership side this season, doing well here until uh, with one trick too many. That's an area to watch tonight, Martin. Just listening around the place when I'm talking, they were very anxious to try and put pressure in behind Anderson and Lasso. They're both going to play as wing-backs and get caught forward. I think the Swedes are looking to stretch the three centre-backs then. And that means getting the ball in behind Anderson, in behind Lasseau, and then working the centre-backs out, pulling them out of position. And that's probably why I think that Henrik Larsson, as opposed to Andreas Anderson, was picked to play right up top for his movement. Well, the Celtic fans, of course, would expect him to play forward, mm. but he has been playing very effectively since uh, Tommy Söderberg took over as manager his Shearer doing well to keep that in so Henrik Larson has been playing well for his country as a midfield man but that's changed at least at the start here see Andreas Anderson Martin's just had a he's obviously got a wandering role he's running in field he's found himself left side central right side red now <laughs> caught by Larson that's a pretty good start, you know, from England. They all look confident. We watched him in training last evening. 
I thought it looked very bright, very sharp. Glenn has probably got them just at the right stage now. He hears no criticism. <laughs> it has been very strange, I must say, to try and marry the uh, newspaper reaction, or some of it, with the potential in the team and the crowd's uh, reactions when England came home prematurely, you may say, but treated as heroes for some of the World Cup exploits, shall we say. Well, that's a bad tackle. That's what he's got to be careful about. We saw him show that type of temper. He didn't get a free kick a minute ago. It's just a second before that. He thought he was the victim of a tackle that wanted a free kick. He didn't get it. But that's an awful tackle. That is an awful tackle. Very much like the one he got sent off with Old Trafford against Peter Schmeichel. And that's just something he can't afford to have in his game at this level, Martin, because normally... I think it's Ronnie Johnson, by the way. There. So oh, it was Ronnie Johnson, you're right. <laughs> but I know what you're saying. Yeah. And, uh, well, we talk about how mature he is for his age, but um, that was youthful <laughs> impetuosity, shall we say. Misapplied. And he's got to be treated the same as everybody else at this level, as he would expect. Yellow card for Owen, and if you've just joined us, a goal for England from an Alan Shearer free kick. <laughs> Stefan Sparks, who had a season with Arsenal, to take this free kick. And a uh, strong defensive header from Sol Campbell. You know, I'd expect England's two centre-backs in particular, Adams and Campbell, to deal pretty comfortably with anything tossed in that high. Redknapp. Always been admired by Glenn Hoddle, but has had such bad luck with injuries, often when playing for England, and he hasn't played too often. He's ninth cap tonight. Look at Sol Campbell go here with the confidence born of a, a splendid World Cup campaign personally. Lasso's cross. Confusion at the back for Sweden with the goalkeeper coming and not really calling it seemed to take total charge and the outcome is an England corner and Sol Campbell really responsible for that England sortie forward. Well, he looked shaky headman in goal. And that was a cross, he should have came, made it known he was coming and taking care of it. going towards the near post, it's over him, it's Shearer who meets it pretty much unattended, long way out, what a chance, I know it's 12 yards out, but the movement was excellent, they've worked very hard here and off the ball to get Shearer into this space ahead of his marker, it's perhaps a fraction high when he met it, he was always a touch underneath it. Well Alan Shearer has penetrated the defences of Sweden, which have gone four internationals without conceding a goal prior to this friendly games or so-called friendlies you would call on the goalless draw back in April against France which of course looks an impressive result after events since then they also beat Italy and Denmark prior to the World Cup and a couple of weeks ago Russia all those wins without conceding a goal well Sweden behind here and I stress again what an effect had on the fans, we'll see what an effect it's had on their players. Long from Roland Nielsen. Adam challenged by Larson unfairly. Clever Tony Adams. He, he wins, you watch him, he wins so many free kicks, you know, when centre forward strikers put themselves up against him. Southgate, who started the World Cup in the side, but then picked up a training injury and only reappeared as a substitute against Argentina and a substitute who wasn't likely to take a penalty. <laughs> Wonder why. Jürgen uh, Petersen, who plays in Germany with Borussia Mönchengladbach. He's been the main scoring threat in recent games for Sweden. A similar in hair colouring and features the Paul Scholes.
Patrick Anderson, who played with uh, Graham Lasso and Alan Shearer at Blackburn. For a short spell, not a happy time for him in England. Birkeland, of course, who left Rangers in the summer to play in Spain. Adams might have been the uh, guilty party that time. The battle rejoined against Henrik Larsen. I think that might just be a throw in. Tony Adams indicating the dies. The referee, I didn't think it any indication of giving a free kick. to be better than that. David Seaman will take them all day. And he's used it well to Lasso, who missed playing in Chelsea's final in the Cup Winners' Cup on this ground back in May, but did get a, a medal. And it's it. Another England corner. Lovely play again. Great cross field pass from Scholes. Darren Anderson just, well, come out, just comes in, dives in. He just waited on him, Anderson, but this is pretty good defending from Bjorklund. He's got a cross really well. Well, the last corner led to an effort at goal from Alan Shearer. What can England come up with this time? Melby, who's a centre-back by trade, who's been put into the midfield by Sweden today. And Stiffen that part of the team. There he is, winning the ball, but not uh, keeping it in Sweden's possession. Campbell. And so. Vince. and Patrick Anderson play together for a long time for Sweden. Caught out by Jungberg. Pettersson. Anderson. Graham Lasso who manoeuvred Pettersson out of the way and has produced the pass to set England onto the front foot again with Shearer. No one in danger of going offside. <laughs> Which is what he did. <coughs> and then he plucked the ball in the net with wonderful, <laughs> wonderful <laughs> technique. Well, he didn't know he was offside. So he thought he'd score, but he just got a little bit ahead of the ball. Again, Alan Shearer drives in from right side to central area. And you just watch Michael Oney, just goes ahead of play. Just there, he's about a yard offside, two yards offside. Flag doesn't go up, look, then suddenly it goes up pretty late. Nice bit of practice for the young lad there. Well, it's been mentioned already, those extraordinary scenes. Michael Mania at the uh, press hotel where he was brought to meet the Swedish journalist on Thursday night. Sure was... Uh, just a spectator to that. Not much interest in the England captain then, but plenty of interest now. Larson. Paul Campbell and Darren Anderson, as we understand it, do not know about the events at Tottenham Hotspur today with the departure of Christian Gross. <laughs> Young back. Comes back to him, Larson. All won fairly enough by Paul Ince, whose star will be known to the Italian referee. The European qualifiers, similar to the European groups for the World Cup qualification, 
nine sections only the winners automatically qualify oh it jamie redknapp roaring up in support and uh, coming from the keeper was darren anderson in with a miss hit shot redknapp trying to divert it goalwards as unlucky he just didn't spot jimmy redknapp michael owen but that's what he's looking for that's what england are looking for school spotted him was able to drive that 40 yard pass it was just a little bit wide a little bit straighter and michael will, might well have gone in on goal Schwarz. Yeah, training there was uh, henrik larsen for sweden Battle between the two number eights but the free kick given against redknapp for a foul on Mielby. young back Gets it back from Pettersson. Poor mark. Sweden with plenty of players forward here. And England might uh, find some space to break into. He's having a look to see who's keeping pace with him. Owen is there. Paul Stoll's jogging through the centre. Shearer as well. Darren Anderson coming from deeper. Shearer. Rousseau. attacking the cross Michael Owen had come close to Alan Shearer to try and help if a full speed was required no one has really gambled to run on into the middle for the sort of ball that Shearer supplied that's a pretty good start coming up 20 minutes now the goal in the opening minute but since then no real scares for England pretty much controlling the pace of the game I think we all thought it might be played at a little bit higher tempo but I think what the goal has done it's enabled England just to pop the ball around keep it at the back if they want been under no great pressure at the back yet the back three have pretty much been untroubled Everyone has to come out here to prevent a corner just in the air by Campbell that doesn't happen too often but it was uh, seen as the consequence of unfair contact on him yeah I thought that was a free kick it wasn't given for that the fence was against Gareth Southgate but that was what they were looking at. It certainly was a free kick. Beautifully guided off by Shearer. Anderson's cross. Scholes. Shearer's offside. Great vision from Shearer. You know that little header, Mark? That was all to do with having a picture in your head. People are very great players. They always know where people are before the ball arrives to them. Shearer knew exactly that Anderson in the street. Look, doesn't look. He knows he's there. He's already had a look a few seconds earlier. He had the picture. That was lovely stuff. You can see just a yard offside. Schwarz. Poor Mark. Three ahead of him. Pedersen looking for the link up with Larson. Needs someone uh, on the right hand side. Roland Nielsen, who was only past fit a couple of days ago, he missed Coventry's last Premiership match with a rib injury. But showing he can use his right foot as well and his former club colleague at Highbury, David Seaman, able to snaffle that and try and send uh, Shearer chasing. England throw. That's good, that's great. It's invaluable when you can do that. It's just a high, hopeful clearance from David Seaman. Shearer puts Kamark under enough pressure. Wins his side of throwing. 30 yards from their goal. Anderson. <laughs> Redknapp and Imps who have a, a tremendous record, of course, in the premiership with Liverpool together as a midfield pairing, but they're starting an international together for the first time. Neil <laughs> B. with his presence to force Patrick Anderson to play it back to Hedman. Bjorkler. Patterson and Henrik Larsson just showing one or two signs of uh, linking up. 
And the ball's played uh, out to them from deep. And then a bit lucky then. Yeah, for few scared. The movement's been pretty good, Martin, but as I say, I think the back three have been so well protected by what's in front of them as well. I think Ince and Redknapp and Scholes are all doing a pretty good job when they don't have the ball. But Sweden are having to work very, very hard to find any sort of room at all. Young back. Quoted in the uh, Swedish papers over the last couple of days, he's saying he doesn't think too much of English football. <laughs> Might be revising his opinion after this game, but it's 60 years since England last won in Stockholm, 30 years since any English victory over Sweden, and 20 years since the win anywhere in Scandinavia in a competitive international. So several historical scores to be settled. Played for Sheffield Wednesday very uh, impressively.